Hi, I'm Bill. I'm Lori. And welcome to our channel. Uh, we're about to share with you a video of Lori making two different doughs. One is a Biga and one is a Patrick Ryan uh, sourdough from uh, I Love Cooking Ireland. So, Lori, why are we sharing these videos? Well, I think they're both have terrific outcomes. They're really easy to handle and they don't need any special tools to prepare. And um, they're good for all levels of pizza making, whether you're a beginner or um, an advanced. And they, they're they just both delicious. Okay, excellent. And if you like this kind of content, please give us a thumbs up. As always, we welcome new subscribers. And what really drives the channel are your comments and questions because that's how we learn uh, through that process as well. So sit back and enjoy the video. Well, I'm making, uh, the first step of making this Viga dough is preparing the Viga, and it only is takes minutes to do. It's got 325 grams of flour, an eighth teaspoon of instant dry yeast, which you can add directly to the flour, and you mix in 228 grams of warm water. And you can use your hands or you can use a dough whisk, which is what I like to use. You just want to make sure the flour is fully hydrated. You don't need to knead it really. And this cover up with cling film once the water has been added. And set it aside for 12 hours. Hi, uh, this is Lori again. And it's been 24 hours since we made our Viga. And now we're going to start making our pizza dough. So our Viga has risen, it's in this bowl, it's a little puffier than it was yesterday. And uh, so I'm going to add 18 grams of salt to 222 grams of water, warm water. We just make, mix it together. Kind of get it to dry slightly. And so what I want to do is incorporate the flour and the water together. So I'm going to add the water. And I find the easiest way to mix these two together is just using my hand. So this is um, 340 grams of flour. And I want to make sure that the vega and the flour are fully incorporated. So that might take about five minutes. So just be careful as you're mixing it together. Get it all incorporated. And after this stage, we're gonna let the uh, flour and vega and everything fully hydrate and we're gonna set it aside for about at least 20 minutes. Yeah, so you just wanna Kind of pinch everything together and so I'll see you in about 25 minutes okay now this is the third step in the process our Biga dough has uh, fully hydrated it's been at least 20 minutes uh, you can make this step longer whatever is convenient I'm gonna Put some flour on my um, counter or table and I'm going to use a scraper to get my dough out of the and this dough is pretty sticky so you might need to add a little bit of extra flour and I'm going to knead this dough just for a few minutes until the ball becomes pretty smooth and if you need to add more flour you can Mm 
This is already a pretty smooth ball. This dough has a really nice texture already. It is kind of sticky. You can add more flour if it's sticking to you, but you don't need to, um, you don't really want to add a whole lot. See, this dough has already really come together. I like the way it feels. So I'm going to uh, just get it into a ball and uh, and you can use your scraper to kind of help you shape it. Put it into a bowl and you want to coat it with a little oil and we're going to let it rise now for another two hours. So I'll see you then. And make sure you cover your um, dough ball with some plastic film to keep it from drying out. Well, we're back. And this is part four of making a Bika pizza dough. And we're ready to divide and ball. Uh, you can use a scale if you want to. And I should mention that this is a 65% hydration dough and it makes four balls of about 290 grams. And I've already put flour on my surface um, and I'm going to use this bench scraper to get the dough ball out. So I'm going to divide this into four pieces. So what I'm going to do is make a log. And I don't really use a scale, so I kind of just portion it and kind of see if it's even. Um, in the original video, um, he put his dough balls, I just see if they're about the same size. <laughs> and he put his dough into oiled individually oiled plastic containers but uh, I don't really haven't done that uh, I put it on a floured tray and I cover it with plastic wrap and let it I'm gonna let the balls sit there and I'm gonna fold them into themselves and make a really nice ball and I put it on a floured tray and I cover it with plastic wrap and this dough is really nice. I mean, if you're a dough aficionado, which I've become one, I really love handling really nice dough. Well, I guess I didn't divide it exactly right because these are lighter, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. You really want to have the dough balls nicely tucked into themselves because then they rise a lot better. The more of the gas gets trapped. That's my personal opinion. And I would take my time to make your dough balls. Like this one, see, it's not very well formed. So I'm going to redo it. I just stuck it nice and tight. And if you if it's sticky, you can use your bench scraper to help you. Put it here. And I'm going to cover them with a little bit of flour. And if you put it in a plastic container, I guess you would just keep the oil coating there. So, as I said, we're going to let these sit. Um, for two more hours at room temperature. Oh. 
And you can cover it with a damp towel too to keep them from drying out. So we'll see you for the next step in two hours. Uh, today I'm making Patrick Ryan's uh, I Love Cooking Ireland Sourdough Pizza Dough. And it just takes minutes to prepare. So I have 500 grams of uh, semolina, I mean the 500 grams of bread flour in the bowl. I'm going to add 50 grams of semolina, 10 grams of salt, and I'm going to mix those together. Oh, oh. And I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of yeast, which is equivalent to about a gram of baker's yeast. This is uh, dry yeast, doesn't need any activation at all. All can be added directly to the flour. I'm going to mix those together. And I'm using my newest acquisition, which is a dough hook. This is really useful for mixing things like pizza dough. Um, I'm also going to add uh, 200 grams of a sourdough starter. Last night um, the starter was only about this high uh, and then I added an equal volume of flour and water to feed the dough and then overnight it just doubled in volume. It was all the way up to here. So I'm going to turn on my scale and measure 200 grams and it doesn't have to be exact. And you can make pancakes or English muffins or other things with leftover starter. I'm going to add 50 grams of olive oil for a little richness and uh, 325 grams of water. We want to make sure that the starter is thoroughly incorporated into the flour. Which makes this dough hook really nice is that it's <laughs> really easy to clean and it mixes better than a wooden spoon I think. Okay, and then I'm going to let it um, sit in a bowl, which I forgot to get handy. Just overnight. And you can work the dough in a bowl and then put into this oil bowl, um, coated with oil overnight. You can just Mix this for about 30 seconds with your hands. Give it a little kneading. Oh, you can also knead it on the counter, but why uh, dirty another another bowl? <laughs> okay, and that's all it is. Just transfer this to this bowl. You want to have it uh, coated with a little oil and cover it with clean film and then put it in your refrigerator overnight. And that's step one. Just leave it for 24 hours. Uh, then you can divide it into balls, let it sit in another hour and let it rise. 
Well, we've got our Patrick Bryan sourdough pizza dough. It's been in the refrigerator cold proofing for about 24 hours. Now it's time to divide and ball, and this makes four fairly large pizzas, or 12 inch pizzas. So I'm just going to divide this into four pieces. And you can use a scale if you like. I kind of just do this. <laughs> Bill likes me, me to be more precise. a little bigger. Okay, about 2.30. Oh, almost exact. A little bit more on this. Oh, almost on this. I was looking at Bill, saying that how good I am at measuring it. There are almost 230 each. <laughs> I like to make the balls nice and tight and then roll them on the counter. And I put it on a flour tray, although you can put it into a plastic container with some little bit of oil for a couple hours to let them proof. Two, three hours should be good. This one seems bigger, I don't know why. Two forty three. Oh, three twenty three. This is a little bit bigger. The 70. Just tuck your dough under <laughs> and then just make sure your dough is nice and sealed by rolling it around on the counter. So after this stage, I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and a down towel if, you, if your house is particularly dry and uh, let them proof for two to three hours. This dough's cold, so you want to make sure it has time to come to room temperature. I'm just going to roll it in the flour. Or you can, well, this was not, wasn't very well tucked in. Cover it with some plastic wrap and we'll see you when we're ready to cook.